So I watched this movie called Swordfish, and it was wild. Are you ready? Go ahead. All right, here we go. So Hugh Jackman is a hacker who is so good, and you might be asking, well, how good is he? He's so good that he doesn't even know how he hacks. He just sees the code in his head. That would be like a neurosurgeon saying, I don't even know how I do brain surgery. I just see it in my head. <laughs> Hugh Jackman is recruited by John Travolta, who is sporting the dumbest haircut in the history of haircuts and this idiotic early 2000s soul patch. Oh, and everyone has one ear pierced because that is cool. You'll note I use the present tense there because it is still cool. And here's the recruitment scene. So Hugh Jackman is sitting in this casino or something, and John Travolta slaps down a laptop right in front of him and tells him he has to hack the Department of Defense in 60 seconds. So cool, right? Well, buckle up. One of his henchmen holds a gun to Jackman's forehead while Travolta starts counting down. And if that wasn't enough, this girl at the table, while he's hacking the Department of Defense in 60 seconds, undoes his pants and starts sucking his dick right at the table it was incredible <laughs> so i want you to picture this truly hugh jackman with one ear pierced sitting at this table madly slamming random keys as fast as he can while all these screens flash and blink with access denied messages all over the place while he's orgasming from this girl giving him what looks like an incredibly good blowjob does this have anything to do with the movie? No, but that's not what this era of filmmaking was about. It was about being so badass that you can shove random BJs into your awesome hacking scenes. And it's also about super rad dialogue. Let me tell you about that. <laughs> so Don Cheadle plays this federal agent, right? And he's after Jackman for being a hacker or whatever. And there's this one scene where Cheadle's interrogating this other hacker for other hacker stuff. And at one point, he grabs the guy's lawyer, shoves him out of the room, pulls out his gun, and with a straight face, mind you, tells this lawyer to eat a d <laughs> Don Cheadle, Academy Award nominated and Golden Globe winning actor, reads the line, eat a d like only an Academy Award nominated Golden Globe winning actor can. Does it have anything to do with the movie? No. But that's not what this era of filmmaking was about. It was about shoving lines like eat a dick and I'm not here to suck your dick into as many scenes as possible. And that is a line in the movie, by the way. I'm not here to suck your dick, Stanley. So Jackman accepts this offer from Travolta because he's going to get a bunch of money for it, which he's going to use to win custody of his daughter, who is currently living with his ex-wife, who is, of course, a drug-crazed porn star. Does that have anything to do with the movie? No, but that's not what this era of filmmaking was about. It was about having scenes of a porn star passing out after dumping ice from the champagne bucket into a glass of sloppily poured vodka with copious amounts of drugs on every conceivable surface of their entire house. So Jackman is a good guy, right? Because he's doing all this for his daughter or whatever. And I don't know if he's having a moral struggle, because he seems completely on board with helping Travolta steal a bunch of money from the government. No hesitation. Oh, I forgot the supercomputer Travolta lets him use. It's such an ultimate computer that you have to hack it in order to even be able to use it. <laughs> and Jackman walks into the room and you can tell it's the ultimate hacking machine because, dude, it has seven monitors. No joke. Never mind that a radiologist in a lab might have that many for just like CT scans or whatever. Travolta's is way better because the monitors are spaced out in a way that makes it wildly impractical to do anything. <laughs> you would get whiplash just trying to type a freaking email, assuming you had hacked into the computer to be able to send emails in the first place. So Jack is doing his hacking and building this virus, right? And we know how he's doing because we have this huge montage of over-the-top emotions accompanied by techno rap. <laughs> and I mean it because the subtitles say techno rap music plays and we don't actually see what he's doing on this Jackson Pollock splattering of monitors not that it would matter anyway because he just sees all the code in his head remember and he's super happy or super angry or super sad or super excited oh I lied we do see one thing on one of the screens it's this polygon thing with other polygon things this is supposed to represent how close he is to hacking the system or something I don't really know but it was clear how I was supposed to feel because Jackson was telegraphing that in freaking semaphore. So he finished and it's all good. And he goes down to the Matrix's wine cellar to celebrate. And he finds a frozen John Travolta. But then John Travolta shows up and says they need to go to a drive because that's what the script said they should do next. 
and there's a ton of cool tandem driving where John Travolta pulls the emergency brake to shoot these guys passing up both sides and Hugh Jackman is driving but they're somehow still going really fast even though the emergency brake is still engaged and I know what you're thinking maybe he disengaged it off screen but I would answer no because we see him specifically do it in a later shot and that time is when Travolta says, drive, and Hugh Jackman responds, I can't drive this car. And John Travolta just looks at him and yells, learn. And then he does. He does <laughs> learn, and he's so good at it. I was blown away, but not as much as those other guys. <laughs> So later, Hugh Jackman is talking to Halle Berry about it. Oh, yeah, Halle Berry is in this movie, and she's a government agent or something that's infiltrated John Travolta's organization. And I totally forgot about the scene where she's topless for absolutely no reason at all. Hugh Jackman walks outside, says, I need to borrow your car. She's like, hey, I'm naked. And it has nothing to do with anything. It's just throwing her out there topless. And over the years, they tried to spin the scene in a bunch of different ways. But when you remove all the double speak and really dissect and chisel away until you get to the raw essence of the scene, it could be explained in a mere fragment of a sentence. Stupid as f <laughs> It's like they were banking on people saying, hey, you should go check out this movie so you can see Halle Berry's boobs. Critics are saying. Halle Berry has never looked so topless. I couldn't get my pants back on. Academy Award says what? I don't know why this scene was in the movie. Was it hard to watch? No, just me. So John Travolta is actually on the payroll of the senator who likes fly fishing, which we see. And John Travolta accurately and elegantly analogizes fly fishing to masturbating, which means I must be doing one of those things very, very <laughs> wrong. And they're working towards this mysterious goal, but now the senator is turned on him, and John Travolta has to kill him because he sold out America, and that's what he says. So John Travolta is actually a member of this secret government organization that apparently only this single senator knew about, and nobody else in the entire government knows about it, which doesn't really seem like that would be a thing, but it is. And they want to steal all this money to fund their war against terrorists. And he says things like, they bomb a church, we bomb 10. They hijack a plane, we take out the airport. They kill tourists, we nuke the whole city. And Hugh Jackman doesn't want them to succeed, so... Doing some quick thinking, he turns off the lights to shut down the operation. But surprisingly, that doesn't work, and they continue with their plan. And then we cut to the scene that actually happened is the very first scene in the movie, where they're robbing the bank. And SWAT and the cops and whoever are trying to stop John Travolta as he's in the process of robbing the bank, and it doesn't work. And there's this huge Matrix orgasm of an explosion. It's like some movie executive watched the bullet time stuff in the Matrix, called up some other movie executive, and said... I've got this idea. Have you seen The Matrix? Okay, you know all that cool, super bullet time stuff they do? What if we did that? And that was it. They just decided to do that. <laughs> and let me tell you, this scene is ridiculous, to put it mildly. So now we're caught up to the present, where Hugh Jackman has called Don Cheadle because he wants to stop Travolta, but it's not working, since you know all these people just got CGI blown up. So Hugh Jackman is sticking his virus into the bank computer to steal $9 billion. As a side note, I noticed that every account was created on 0124444, -4 which I couldn't parse into any kind of actual date, but I didn't try for that long. That's just something that bothered me. And he's successful. <laughs> but then there's that movie thing where he's walking away, and John Travolta is like, stop. And then there's that tense pause. But then he says, good job. And let me tell you, for that tense pause, I was on the edge of my seat. You know, I wonder if Halle Berry would all of a sudden show up to the bank topless. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a double cross Hugh Jackman has set the money to jump to different accounts which was super smart of him unfortunately it started doing it before he walked out of the door so that part wasn't very smart he says he can't hack into his own virus to get the money back but if John Travolta lets the hostages go then he'll get him the money back but he just said he can't hack into his own virus to get the money back so I don't really know how that would work so Travolta uses Halle Berry to force Hugh Jackman to hack into his own virus, which remember, he just said he can't do, and they string her up, but they leave her hands free so she could technically grab onto the rope to relieve some of the pressure around her neck, but she doesn't do that. She just struggles there like an idiot. <laughs> Hugh Jackman is hacking his virus, and just like that other scene, he only has 60 seconds. I love continuity, and this movie just has it in spades. 
and he does it this time without the benefit of a blowjob even though i mean john travolta was like right there (laughs) but then john travolta kills halle berry anyway because he knew she was a government agent the whole time and they're taking this bus to an airport to escape and don Cheadle is so pissed about it but apparently not pissed enough to tell john travolta to eat a and on this bus, Hugh Jackman sees a henchman load a rocket launcher into a case. And the guy's like, what? And this is a moment where we're supposed to think the guys who strapped explosive vests to 30 hostages just blew up 30 more about 10 minutes ago and drove a car with the emergency braking gauge super fast while firing giant automatic weapons, killing tons of people, might do something with that rocket launcher where people could get hurt. But it's a total double cross because they're not actually going to the airport. A helicopter shows up and truly tests the structural integrity of a bus ceiling because it lifts the entire bus into the air. And they're all sitting pretty comfortably in this bus despite all the exterior shots showing it swaying all over the place. And of course they smash the bus through all of these buildings in the city instead of, you know, going up. And they end up on this roof. And John Travolta completely read my mind when he says, Not everything ends the way you think it should. Because I was thinking this movie should have ended in the first two minutes, but it didn't. So then the bad guys get on the helicopter and are escaping. But Hugh Jackman isn't going to let that slime ball get away. So he grabs a rocket launcher that for some reason the bad guys decided to leave on the bus. And somehow he knows exactly how to assemble and operate it. And makes a truly unbelievable shot right into the helicopter as it's flying away. And I know what you're thinking. Why the f*** does this movie exist? (laughs) But it's not over yet. The autopsy of the somehow intact body reveals that John Travolta was actually a foreign agent and Halle Berry wasn't actually a government agent at all and her body is missing. Hugh Jackman realizes everyone has been played the whole time because as he ran off the bus with the rocket launcher in those five seconds, John Travolta put his frozen body double from earlier into the helicopter and actually just ran down some stairs right next to it, which nobody on the bus saw apparently, despite it being, you know, a bus, which has windows, which you can see out of. In the aftermath, Hugh Jackman is happily traveling with his daughter from place to place instead of enrolling her in school, providing some sort of stability, proving he's actually not a very good father at all, despite the movie telling us that he is. And we close with Halle Berry walking into a bank, asking the teller to transfer the $9 billion, to which the teller does not bat an eye or say she needs to seek higher authorization. It must just be something that happens regularly. And Halle Berry meets up with John Travolta, who is completely unrecognizable in his new persona as a member of NSYNC. And this would have been another brilliant moment where Halle Berry could have been topless as they're on a boat in the middle of the ocean, but she doesn't do it. And then they blow up terrorists from their boat with their $9 billion, giving everyone in this movie complete and satisfying closure. The end. Swordfish, check it out. (laughs) 